morning. Oh, you got to talk back to me. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate that. So I want to take you on a journey with me for about 15 minutes. And it's a personal journey. So there will be some parts that can be funny, some parts that can be exciting. But what I want you to realize is that this is real life for me. This is not one of those situations where I'm going to give you these concepts and theories that you don't understand. I really want you to understand this is my life. So to give you some background, I was born to a hardworking, loyal, and hard-driven mother. My father tested borderline genius. And at about five years old, my parents split. And so my life at that particular point in time was turned upside down. And so from that, my per I remember having this conversation with my grandmother. And my grandmother mentioned two words to me. She mentioned, life will have roadblocks, but it's all about how you create perception. So in that, let me ask by show of hands, in this picture, how many people see an older lady? By show of hands, show me your hands. Okay. On the other side of that, how many people see a younger lady? So most of the room sees a younger lady. Here's the first thought. We all live in the same building, we just have different views. So what I hope to do today is flip the perception of roadblocks on its head so that we don't take negative connotations away from it. So my mother was a mentor and she said to me, success is not left to chance, it's what is up to us to create it. And so with that, I want to help you, give you some steps to help you create success. So this is my mother on her 70th, 70th birthday and she is still to this day the person who laid the foundation for a roadmap for me. And so I want you to see the cardiographer in my life who started all of this for me. So let's hop directly into this. Wait a minute. Wait, what? You're going to take a word like roadblocks that I've heard my entire life, and you're going to tell me that it's not negative. Yes, I'm going to do that today. Okay? So let's talk about the R of this. So the R of this is I think it's very important that you create a regimen that allows you to see success long term. So a lot of times we think about success and we think about the work that's involved with success and sometimes when we initially start, we want to do the work. And then there's other times that we think about the work and we're like, I'm not doing that. So my, my example in this picture is, how many people have started or know somebody who started a diet or a workout plan? <laughs> okay? How many people have quit a diet or workout plan? Right? So think about it. That regiment, we know the work that needs to be done, but I am here to submit to you today to continue to do the work, and that will help you set the stage to remove roadblocks. Now, I'm not crazy. When you start on the process, and we can keep with the gym theme, you will run into obstacles. I'm tired, I'm sore, I want a cupcake, whatever the obstacle is for you, right? You run into those. So this, so this young guy, at seven years old, left the cardiologist, and I was told that I would never be able to participate in any sports. And that smirk you see on my face is, I will prove you wrong. So I took the obstacles, and I turned them into this word called opportunities. So what I want to submit to you today is, your obstacles become your stepping stones for your next opportunity. So again, you'll start to notice this is a roller coaster. So as I got older and a little bit more mature, what I also realized is that I needed a more surgical approach to this work that I wanted to accomplish. So what I have done in my life is that I created an action plan, and I always start my action plan with the end goal in mind. Very important, start it with the end goal in mind, because if you understand that, the work that you put into it surgically, and again, I don't, not these big concepts, surgical work that you put in it will drive you back to what your ultimate purpose was. So the A is the action plan. This is me several months ago repurposing my work. So we talk about deficiencies. So all of us have them. We have to embrace them. So this is my daughter five years ago, and I remember she said, Dad, I want to learn to shoot pool. And so I was like, okay, wait a minute, let's talk about this and what deficiencies can I help her overcome to at least help her understand the game. I should point out she doesn't shoot pool anymore. Right? Yeah. <laughs> However, what I was trying to teach her was that we don't focus on deficiencies, we, fo we focus on how to make difficult situations salvageable. 
So that's the D in this. So before I go to the block section, let me back up a little bit before we get to beliefs. So we create a regimen. That's the first thing we have to do, right? We understand that there's a regimen that has to be in place to be successful. We also, because we're realistic people, understand that there will be obstacles along the way that we will have to overcome. The A in this is that we go back and we relook at the action plan to ensure that we're on the road and we're navigating success. And then the D in this is that we understand the deficiencies, but we also understand that we can do things differently to alleviate the deficiencies. So that's the road. Now here's the part that neurologically we get stuck on, the block part. So we're all born with the belief system and it's developed over time through your relationships, through your cultural experiences, everything that's in there, in everything that's in you. So for the belief part, if you believe, if you can tell yourself that I can be successful, you have already started with a base that most people don't start with. Think of this for a second. By the time an individual is five years old, they've heard 5,000 no's and 1,000 yeses. So we are hardwired to believe that we can't do something. What I hope to do for you today is flip that on its head and say, here, I can do this. I know I have the time, talent to do this. My belief system will support that. Again, this roller coaster we ride on. So now we start to really think about our liabilities, right? So this happened to me for real. So last year, I was on a plane. I traveled across Montana to work. I was on a plane. And while we we're on the plane, 9,000 feet in the air, the window opens. Yeah, oh my God, for sure, right? <laughs> So I'm on this plane, and this window is open, and it's a liability. And it was interesting to me because my first thought was, oh, you fill in the blank. <laughs> but then my second thought was, can I control this? And the answer to that question was, no, I can't. So I did two things. I'm not 10,000 feet in the air. I text my wife, who's sitting up in the audience. I said to her, I love you. Here's some important stuff you need to know. True story, by the way. I text my daughter, if I don't see you tonight, no worries. No worries, right? Because I've tried to live my life such that if I fell out, I've done everything that I could do to be successful. Now, when I, when I landed on the ground, I kissed the Billings Airport lobby, right? <laughs> But this was a liability that I learned that I could not control. So what I'm saying to you is take your focus off the things that you cannot control, spend your energy on the things that you can control, and do them hard and well. Very important, okay? And what I realized through this was when I took my focus off of what I could not control, it opened up different opportunities for me. So now let me be careful. Some of us are so laser focused that we don't use the talents that we have that's not within the focus. So let me say that again. So we're running this race and we know we can do this thing because we're classically trained, you do one thing at a time. I would fight that theory. If there's something that will help you get to your ultimate goal, do welcome the opportunity. Don't be afraid of the opportunity. Welcome it and embrace it. So as I mentioned, my wife's in the stands, and I realized this early on. Anytime you're trying to build something, you need to have a level of continuity around you to ensure that you can be successful. So I think this is in three parts. You have to have a huge cheerleader, somebody that'll be like, absolutely. What you're doing, I will jump off a cliff for. You also need somebody on your team that will tell you no. So how many people have ever been a groupie at a concert? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Right? Groupies won't tell you no. You need somebody who will stand with you and will tell you no. And then thirdly, you need somebody who has skin in the game yet stays objective. And so my wife has been all three of those things for me in different cycles in my life. So sometimes she plays one role really well and we realize we have to put somebody else in to play another role. However, keeping that continuity in your life is very important when you're trying to achieve your goals. So this is what I learned. So I mentioned my wife and my daughter here today. And, I, and this was the part that I was missing because people take this for granted. We don't give each other enough grace. So as a 15-year-old daughter, pray for me, that's a whole other story, right? 
I learned from an early age that the level of kindness that I treat her with, I need to treat the others around me with. This part gets left out. So I highly encourage you two things, give yourself grace and kindness and give those who you work with the same grace and kindness. It will go much further than you would ever realize. And then lastly, when we're talking about roadblocks, the thing we want to create is a level of success. We want to have success around the things that we're doing. But here's where success gets lost. We as big time leaders and we in our jobs, what we forget to do sometimes, and this is why success gets lost, is that we don't celebrate along the way. So I highly encourage you to celebrate those milestones, those mile markers that you make. Secondly, do it with somebody because you will forget. You will absolutely forget that you cost 10, 10 things. You'll remember the one that you didn't do. And then lastly, and then lastly, when you're doing this and you're talking about success, don't be afraid to talk about it. People call it, some people who are not successful, they may call it cocky, but when you set out and accomplish your goal, be willing to celebrate your goal. So really quickly again, regimen. Make sure you put one in place that you can live by and you can do the work. Remove all the obstacles so you allow yourself an opportunity to be successful. Create the action plan. Ensure that it's surgical and that it allows you to be able to duplicate the success for a blueprint for later on. Deficiencies. Turn deficiencies on their head. Make deficiencies. Now you're a difference maker. Your belief system will control how you work, and it will also be the foundation for the work that you continue to do. Liabilities always exist. Don't run from them. Make your liabilities, those things that you think about less, focus on, laser focus on the goal at hand. Opportunities will be created because of your focus and that you have released the liability section. You're not spending brain cells on that, okay? Have that continuity around you that keeps you focused, that cheers you on, that brings you back to reality. The K, make sure you are kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to those around you, and you will create success. I want to leave you with one story. It is written, it is, this is written, you can go read it, that there was a gentleman that played in the National Basketball Association that took 950 shots to win or send a game into overtime, 950 shots. Of those shots, he made 146 of those shots. This player was Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Most of us, some of us in the room, revere him as the greatest basketball player to ever pick up a basketball. He made only 15% of the winning shots. What I'm telling you is that if you remove the roadblocks and focus on the 15% and leave the 85% behind, you will create success. God bless.